Robert Frank's seminal work, The Americans, is one of the most influential photographic books ever published. It's credited with not only being a true and often uncomfortable reflection of American culture, but also a fundamental work that redefined it. Always a critic of the American drive for conformity, Frank once said he was, quote, tired of romanticism and wanted to present what he saw pure and simple. And this is exactly what he did. His black and white photography captured everything from the ordinary, the solitary, and the rejected individuals that made up the real face of America. Frank also experimented with filmmaking, at one point collaborating with author Jack Kerouac and poet Allen Ginsberg, and once again pushing the medium's boundaries into never-before-seen territory. And here to tell us more about Robert Frank's genius is Jonathan Day. He is the author of Postcards from the Road, Robert Frank's The Americans. Hi, thank you so much for joining us today. So tell us, uh, how did Robert, Robert Frank and his book change the very nature of documentary photography? I think that before Frank, people didn't understand that photography could be used to really interrogate, you know, to ask questions, to look for really deep, meaningful answers to issues out on the street, issues of society. I mean, people had done that. They had looked at society, but Frank used it in a kind of a poetic way. He was influenced by lots of the people around him. I'm sure we'll talk about this more, but people like Jack, Car Jack Kerouac. Uh, he lived opposite Willem de Kooning, the, uh, the painter, just across a yard from him. Um, he was very influenced by jazz music. Uh, he was part of the beat generation, uh, as they're often called. So he was bringing this aesthetic, um, an aesthetic that comes from existentialist philosophy, from Camus, from Sartre. Um, through all of this art that was in some ways very intellectual, in some ways very popular. So he's bringing this to photography and doing something that hadn't been seen before and something which actually lots and lots of people have carried on doing since. So I think his work's a pivotal moment in photography. What was the public's reaction to The Americans when it was released in 1959? Well, it's really interesting because when it was released in 1959, there were only something like 250 copies made. So it was very small. Um, he deliberately chose a, a small poetry publisher that published lots of the people he really liked and respected. Um, I've held an original copy um, and the, the quality of the images was not great. You know, printing was not fabulous uh, at that time. So the reaction somewhat was more from the photographic establishment, from critics, people who knew about photography. And Frank was well established. He was very well known. Uh, you know, he did this work on the back of a, of a very prestigious scholarship. So he wasn't obscure, but the whether we can say the public reaction at that time, uh, some of the people who uh, looked at the book were absolutely overwhelmed by its genius. Uh, Walker Evans, for example, he's, you know, a person who was somewhat of a mentor for Frank. Lots and lots of critics really thought that it was terrible, that it was anti-American. Uh, they described it as anti-American, um, that Frank somehow had imposed his own depressed foreign view uh, of America on the country and that this was unacceptable. There was a very, very powerful um, backlash uh, from some writers against the book. And writer Jack Kerouac once said that uh, Frank sucked a sad poem right out of America onto film. What was that thing that Frank captured so well behind what's so-called American dream? Yeah, um, he was very close to Jack Kerouac for a while. They met at a party and I think they made an impression on each other. And uh, Frank originally had a different introduction to the book, but he decided to ask Kerouac and Kerouac wrote a beautiful piece of writing. Uh, you know, some people call it divine improvisational prose, Kerouac's writing, uh, because of the way that he approached writing, the way that he fused ideas, uh, thoughts with something of the speech of the street, with the rhythms of American speech. So in a way, it was a perfect matching for Frank. Um, Frank was very influenced by Kerouac and his approach, but also by what we call the gestural painters, people like Willem de Kooning. He watched this guy painting through the window of his studio and de Kooning pushed paint around on the surface 
but was also incredibly dedicated to making it look in the way that he felt it, it could or should. But there was something of a combination in Kerouac and de Kooning of chance of the accidental of the materials with what they were trying to say. So I think for Frank, similarly, he was looking to capture moments and almost unexpectedly in the way that he used the camera. Um, and what he did was captured, as somebody said, America. He didn't think that that's what he was trying to do, but that's what he did. Those moments showed, if you like, behind the American dream, uh, the reality that existed. Some of his images beautifully show this America existing behind its flag. And um, I think that that was really the thing that he did. He said, OK, the American dream is here. He said that the, you know, his travels and the photography didn't make him hate America. It just made him understand people more. Um, so he was showing a, a deeper, fuller, more real, less embarrassed, less, less, in trying, less trying to gloss things version of the American dream. And tell us about Trolley New Orleans, one of its most iconic photographs. Well, this image um, really is, is perhaps one of the most contemporary and the most obviously sort of newsworthy in some ways at the time. Um, it came at roughly the same time, a few weeks away from Rosa Parks, who famously refused to stand up and give her seat to a white man on a trolleybus, um, not in New Orleans, but, um, you know, also in the American South. So this kind of resonates for that reason, uh, in a way. But the image itself, uh, outside of that, I think Frank was aware of that tension, uh, aware of the situation in terms of the relationship between people. What the image does is it shows this um, kind of rather detached, rather haughty looking lady, um, a young boy, smartly dressed, and then behind them, uh, a black man. So it really embodies this notion of um, preferencing white people over black people that was happening in America on public transport at that time. Uh, there's this very large, powerful black man, his position is very slumped. Uh, the young white boy looks as if, you know, he's going to be some sort of leader. But so Frank has a social point. But then look at the picture. Above them are four windows, which almost look as if they have impressionist paintings in them. And I think this really holds the heart of Frank, the tension between the immediate, the political, the social and the much more enduring aesthetic uh, spiritual overtone. Uh, so he's combining both uh, a, a wonderful representation or, or re reflection, echo of fine art painting with something very contemporary and political. So Frank told The Guardian newspaper in 2004 that the kind of photography he did was gone and it was too old. What does he mean by that? And do you agree? I think that, that following Frank, I mean, Frank, Frank allowed me to use his images and worked a little bit alongside early on. And then as I went deeper in, um, he was rather more distant. I think Frank felt very concerned about preserving what he'd done uh, when he was older. But also he had many phases in his career. And after the Americans, he, he for a while gave up photography uh, and concentrated on film. Later coming back to making photography in lots of different ways, drawing into uh, the photograph and, and such things. So I think for him, maybe it was a challenge that people focus so much on this period of his, his career. And, you know, he'd gone on to other things. And in a sense, he is he's kind of right that, that it is old and it has been happening, but it's still astonishing. And people are still producing, I think, uh, in my opinion, great work in terms of street photography and documentary photography. So is the style old? I think the interest, the fact we're doing this interview, pretty much says that it isn't. Right. It was great to have you on our show today, Jonathan Day. Thanks so much indeed.